Hi, I'm Kelly Blackledge from Tamarack National Wildlife Refuge. And I want to share with you a little bit about pine trees. You know, the trees that have needles and not leaves or conifers. So trees bearing cones. Our conifer trees are trees that um, don't have flowers. They produce cones instead. Or if you're a botanist, they're kind of nerdy, you might call them strobilists or stroboli. These are the female cones. This one is from a white pine tree. It's a little bigger, taller, longer, and one from a red pine tree. Again, these are the female cones, and typically the cones are, the female cones are at the top of the tree, primarily, and the male cones carrying the pollen on the bottom of the tree. So that means that the pollen doesn't just fall right on to the female cone of the same tree, but instead there's better cross-pollination between trees. So the, the pollen flies into the air and will pollinate trees of um, another tree in the area. So it makes them a little healthier. It um, makes them a little bit more robust to survive when there's cross-pollination. So let's take a look at some uh, pictures of trees. We're gonna start with our state tree. Anybody know what that is? <laughs> I bet you do. So that's the red pine or the Norway pine is another term for the, the red pine. And you know the red pine because it has that nice smooth reddish colored bark. If you look close, you'll see a red-bellied woodpecker in this one. <laughs> So lots of wildlife enjoy our conifer trees in the winter time. They provide some really good protection for wildlife. So on the red pine, watch for those, um, the bark and also the needles of the red pine are uh, quite a bit longer and they're actually kind of pokey, the red pine needles. So when you feel it, um, you'll feel that they're a little more stiff or um, pokier feeling. This is a picture of a little bit younger red pine, but you can see those, those needles kind of spray out. Um, they, it, it seems to me it has more of a, a kind of a pokey or spray look to um, the red pine, but they certainly grow really big, um, really tall in Minnesota. And again, the cones on these trees are a little bit more squatty and round compared to um, some of the longer cones that we see. If you were to, if you look close at the needles too, um, the needles come in clumps. And if you pull off just one clump where they're uh, coming off of the branch, they come off in clumps of two. So if it's a red pine, it'll come off in clumps of two needles. So that's another way you can tell you've got a red pine. Now here's what those male uh, cones look like. Um, they're kind of have a whole bunch of little cone looking um, shapes to them, but these carry the pollen on the tree. Again, if you want to get a little nerdy about it, you can call them the micro, uh, micro sporangiite stroboli, <laughs> something like that. So um, they are uh, pretty neat looking. They kind of sometimes change the color of the tree, I think, when, when that happens. So those are the male cones of the tree ah and if you're careful and looking usually in the spring of some of our red pine trees you might even find a pine warbler that we have um, that actually nest in our area and that's what this one is, is a cute little pine warbler you can look for in our pine trees again the bark of the tree is kind of flat this is our little red squirrel on a red pine <laughs> But that bark, you'll, you'll feel kind of flat and has kind of a reddish color uh, to it. Now we also have um, a lot of white pine in the area. And if you're familiar with the refuge, you might see white pine at the Chippewa picnic area. There's a lot of big red, white pines there. There's a few red pines in the area too, um, but 
because the white and red pines were harvested um, a lot in the early 1900s, we don't have a lot of really big red and white pines, particularly because it were located around the Otter Tail River, which was a great place to send those logs downstream for logging um, purposes. So uh, we don't have, um, you know, a lot of really big stretch forests of really big red and white pine. Another place that you might be familiar with uh, finding a nice big white pine tree if you're familiar with the wildlife drive and there's a cute little bench that overlooks pine lake the tree next to that is a really big white pine now the white pine needles are much more soft than the red pine needles they um are a little bit shorter i'd say but you can certainly feel those white pine needles um, and feel just how soft they are if you get your hands around those needles. And the bark um, isn't quite as flat, it has some deep ridges to it. Uh, so if you're looking at the bark of the tree, it has really deep ridges. This is one of those really big white, big old white pine trees on the refuge. A younger white pine will have kind of a smooth bark to it, kind of a gray smooth bark as it starts to grow. And um, and by the way, when you're looking at the tree, you can see the branches coming off in kind of a swirl. And each swirl um, is a new year's growth. So um, between those branches is usually the growth of that tree for that year. Now white pine have longer cones or a little bit, um, they're bigger cones, nice long cones. This is the female cone of the tree and then also the male cones of the tree. Now if you look close at these needles, these clumps, um, if you pick off a clump of the white pine tree, it'll come off in clumps of five. So there's five needles in each clump and I like to remember it as a W-H-I-T-E, five <laughs> letters and five in the clump of that uh, of those needles. So here's a quiz. There's one white pine and one red pine at the front of this photograph. If you know which one is which, you would guess correctly that <laughs> the red pine there has um, kind of that flat reddish color and the white pine is a darker grayish color with deep grooves in it. So red and white pine. And if you're like me, you like to walk amongst the pine now and again and look up because you never know, there might be an owl. This is our great horned owl. And oftentimes they're sit sitting closer to the trunk of the tree. And usually you can find whitewash down the tree. Um, or if you're lucky, you might find some of the remnants of the regurgitated pellets of an owl at the base of the tree. A Little bit harder to find in the snow, but something to look for. Now, another popular tree in Minnesota, one other pine is the jack pine. These seem to be a little bit more scruffy looking, the jack pine does. And jack pine has a little bit smaller needle to it. Um, it does have needles in clumps of two, but they're really small. Um, they also have a cone that has a resin around it. So that cone is um, pretty tight cone and it does require fire in order for it to open up and those seeds to be released. So, um, so you know the uh, jack pine from those really tight cones and the needles are about an inch long or so and in little clumps of two jack pine. Now this one is a balsam fir. So balsam fir will also have small short needles to it but they're gonna be really soft and flat. They're gonna um, kind of spray in a, in a nice flat uh, level way on the, um, and branch out. So balsam fir also really smells good. So when you rub those needles, you can get that wonderful balsam smell from the balsam. Um, here's a little bit closer look, but you can see how flat they are. You can hardly see they don't go all the way around the branch. They're just kind of flat. The needles themselves are flat too. So you can't roll them in your, in your finger because it's nice and flat. 
So another popular tree we have is the spruce. And there are a couple of different kinds of spruce. We have black spruce and white spruce in our area. And black spruce is usually likes a little bit more of a wet foot. <laughs> so in this photograph, you can see there's um, tamarack trees. And we'll talk a little bit more about those. But those are in the front without any needles. And in the back are is a stand of black spruce there. So um, spruce trees are usually really conical shape at the top. Um, you can um, you can usually spot them in the distance because of that nice pointy cone shape of the spruce tree. Now this is one of my favorite spruce trees on the refuge. Maybe you know where it is. <laughs> this one is actually found on, on Two Island Lake on kind of the northern part of the refuge. On a great day, you can see its reflection in the water and it stands pretty proud all by its lonesome out there on Two Island Lake. And spruce trees also have kind of a smoother cone to it. Um, but when you grab the around, um, the spruce branch, it will be um, kind of pokey. It's not um, as nice and soft as the white pine, not as long as needles as a red pine. Um, and of course, and these are um, not flat either. There's needles all the way around each one of the branches on the spruce tree. And if you're lucky, in a spruce bog, you just might come across this little guy. This is a sawwet owl. Um, wonderful little owl. It's small like a screech owl. Um, nice big eyes. And the screech owl will have tufts, but the sawwet owl does not. And oftentimes we'll see them in our uh, the lower valleys where there's a spruce or um, tamarack bog. So here's the tamarack tree, one of my favorites. And of course, the namesake for tamarack refuge. Somehow tamarack refuge lost the K. When you're spelling tamarack tree, you spell it with a K on the end. <laughs> so, But um, the tamarack tree is a um, deciduous conifer. So it does bear cones. It, ha it um, has nice small cones on the branches, but it also loses its needles in the leaf in the fall. So um, those needles turn a brilliant gold color. Um, usually after we see the deciduous trees turning color, then the, the tamarack trees turn color and after that gold display, then they drop to the ground and in the spring grow this beautiful, bright green needle that comes out in these, um, you know, with a whole bunch of needles per um, clump on the tamarack tree. Now this is a close up. That cone is really pretty small, pretty tiny, like a one inch, um, if that <laughs> cone there. And of course, since these are fresh and green, these are also really soft needles. And that's the tamarack tree. So tamaracks um, like wet feet. So oftentimes you see them along the edge, a marshy edge. You'll see those are, generally speaking, those are tamarack trees here, there in the fall and starting to turn a gold color. Now here's kind of a quiz. The, there's several in this picture. So you can see the tamarack trees along the edge of the water. Um, again, they really like wet feet. So they're gonna be really close to the water. They're able to survive in those really wet, uh, boggy conditions. And just beyond that is the black spruce trees. And then up the hill a little bit farther, you can see some nice big white pine in there that like more of that dry, uh, drier soil. So all kinds of, uh, of conifers in our area. We have the red pine, kind of pokey and spray out. Um, the needles kind of have that spray to them. And then the white pine, our lovely white pine trees with soft but long needles. Watch for that bark that's kind of got deeper grooves to it. There's also the um, jack pine. So um, a kind of a one inch needle and in clumps of two is our jack pine needles, so jack pine trees. 
We also looked at our spruce trees. <laughs> so, and these um, have a nice branching to it. The spruce trees do um, with a pokey needle. If you grab the branch compared to the balsam fir, which has a soft needle and flat. Um, another tree that you might see in our area is uh, cedar trees. This one is the red cedar. Um, it's um, got kind of a flat, uh, uh, neat needle to it. It's also, this one isn't quite as pokey, I would say, either. Um, often smells good, obviously. The smell of cedar is always good, but we do have red cedar, and then we also have white cedar. By the way, red cedar is actually a juniper. It's not really a cedar tree. Um, and then we also have um, white cedar. This one has been pressed, so it's a little crispy, <laughs> but you can see it's almost like a scale-like leaf to it. So white cedar you might find in our area as well. So all kinds of conifers, pine trees to be seen. So when you're outside, take a close look, grab one of those uh, leaves and just feel, is it pokey, is it soft? Smell it, roll it between your fingers. Is it a flat needle, a round needle? You'll be surprised what you can learn about our conifer trees here in Lake Country.